we're going to talk for a few minutes on today on the topic of your season is changing. Your season is about to change. You heard the text read earlier today from Genesis 41, 14 to 28. And it's talking about Pharaoh's dream. God came to Pharaoh in a dream to let him know that there was going to be seven years of plenty in Egypt, followed by seven years of famine. He let Pharaoh know that two seasons were coming, not just one. It's not a coincidence when God repeats himself in the Bible. I just want to say that most time, you know, parents don't want to have to repeat themselves. You know, the military don't like to repeat itself, except for the Navy. I'm just going to tell you, when they're on the submarine, there's two sets of instructions that go out, one in the same meaning, but two sets of instructions to establish what is about to be done. Joseph told Pharaoh, your two dreams were one and the same. They had the same meaning. But God repeated it so that you could see that it was firmly established, that it was going to happen, that it's going to happen now. And that you need to do something. He said, listen, pay attention. If you were here on last Sunday, Reverend Hawkins preached a message. Listen, God is speaking to you. God is trying to tell you something. And then Reverend George followed that on Wednesday night and preached about being still and knowing that God is in control and that you can trust him. I just want to say that is still echoing today. God is trying to get our attention. God forewarns us about a change in a season before it happens. He lets us know in advance if we are spiritually in tune That's with right. God. Right. What if the Lord spoke to you, told you your job situation is about to change? What if he told you to save your paychecks? all of it. Would you listen and obediently put it aside? Then shortly thereafter you find out that yes, your job situation did change. And because you listen, because you listened to God and did what he told you to do, that you were prepared to exit one season and walk into the new season. Listen, God is talking to you. God is trying to get your attention. He is forewarning you that your season is about to change. God is trying to get someone's attention even now to let you know that your season is about to change. We can have an extensive corporate change like Egypt, you know, a country or a nation, or we can have a local community type change like our church body, or we can have an individual change in a season. Whether it is employment or lack thereof, 
whether it is a relationship change, marriage, divorce, separation, death of a loved one, your kids graduating and going away to college, or growing up and leaving the nest altogether. All these things are some of the things that happen that causes a seasonal change in our lives. Yeah. Is your season about to change? Sometimes we don't prepare for a season, even though God forewarns us the season is coming. We sometimes get focused on the wrong thing. Yeah. Since we don't like the news that our season is changing, since we don't like the news that we are being given, we go into denial mode. Famines can be devastating. They can wipe out an entire nation. Do we think that Egypt wanted a famine? No, absolutely not. But God, thanks be to God that Pharaoh was smart enough, had the wisdom enough to prepare for the season by listening to the instructions of Almighty God. <sighs> Sometimes I think that just because we are Christians, we think that our life is supposed to be a rose garden. Yeah. But the word of God tells us that in this life there will be troubles. Yeah. There will be trials. There will be storms. There will be seasons of good and bad times. Get over it. That's life. It's the world we live in. Wake up. Pay attention. God is speaking to us. This is probably why God sometimes speaks to us in dreams. We sometimes have too much going on when we are awake that we can't be still long enough to hear what God is trying to tell us to do. We can't focus on what he's saying because we're all over the place. We're too busy. God gave Pharaoh two dreams that meant the same thing. And then he woke him up to make sure that he was going to remember it. Yeah. Has God been troubling your sleep? Has he been disturbing your rest? Is God trying to get your attention to let you know that your season is about to change? So when God forewarns us about a seasonal change, we have an opportunity to act upon it. Yeah. I'm going to read into your hearing uh, verse 29 through 32. Verse 29 says, seven years of great abundance are coming throughout the land of Egypt. But seven years of famine will follow them. It's a good thing he didn't tell them seven years of famine and then seven years of plenty, or they wouldn't have had time to what? Prepare. Then all the abundance in Egypt will be forgotten, and the famine will ravage the land. Isn't it just like us, that as soon as we go through a season of lack, that we forget about the season of plenty when God was blessing us. We go through a rough patch, as some might say, and we act as if nothing good has ever happened to us. That season is so severe that we cannot remember the prior season. Verse 31 says, the abundance in the land will not be remembered because the famine that follows it is so severe. Somebody is in a severe season right now. Somebody is in a rough time right now. I'm just here to let you know that a season has a beginning and it has an end. 
you're not going to be in that season always. <laughs> in the case of Solomon, 1 Kings 9, the Lord said to him, I have heard your prayer and plea that you have made before me. I have consecrated this temple which you have built by putting my name there forever. My eyes and my heart always will be there. As for you, Solomon, if you walk before me faithfully, with integrity and of heart and uprightness as David your father did, and do all I command and observe my decrees and laws, I will establish your royal throne over Israel forever. Yeah. That's a long season, y'all. As I promised David your father when he said, you shall never fail to have a successor on the throne. How many know there's a but? Yeah. But if your descendants turn away from me yeah. and do not observe the commands and decrees I have given you and go off to serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off Israel from the land. I have given them and will reject this temple I have consecrated for my name. That tells me that we can impact how long we are in a season. We can be obedient and have a forever season in the Lord, or we can be disobedient and be rejected and cut off. My, my. It helps to stem us towards what? Obedience. Yeah. Yeah. Marvin Sapp sings the song, Listen. God's trying to tell you something. Listen, you tried it your way. It didn't work. We should at least try God's way. Listen, I want to share a few quick reminders with you of what to do when your season is about to change so that you are able to be successful in your season. Yeah. The first thing that we should do when we know our season is about to change is to be prepared to exit the old one. In order to be ready to step into your new season, we should be prepared to leave the old one. Yeah. What if the Lord spoke to you and told you what was about to happen in your season? Would you listen? <sighs> what are we building? What are we building in our season? The kingdom of God or our own kingdom? You see, we just heard what happened with Solomon, what he told him. So if we decide that we're going to stay in a season past our time and we get stuck and we set up residence in our ministry area, uh -huh. it is no longer God's ministry. Jesus. It's not even the church's ministry. Right. It's now our ministry. God has long taken his hand off of it. It is no longer done unto God. It's no longer serving God, but serving ourselves. We got stuck in a season that we were supposed to exit out of. A sign of a good leader is one in which they have trained and discipled someone else to take their place. When your season is over, always be prepared to exit gracefully. Yeah. <sighs> you cannot turn away from God, even when 
God tells you it's time to move from that comfortable place. It is time to move on because God has to put the gifts in place that the body needs at that time. And we can't stay in our season longer than we are supposed to. We have to be prepared to exit our season. Is your season about to change? So we have to be prepared to exit the old season. And we also need to own our stuff. In this season, we cannot be counterfeit. In this season, we must be authentic. We can't go into this season lying and covering up our sin. It did not work well for Saul, the king. It did not work well for Ananias and Sapphira. Where? <laughs> if it didn't work well for them, and we have been given those examples, do we think it's gonna work well for us? Not in this season. Saul was instructed to completely destroy the entire Amalekite nation. Men, women, children, babies, cattle, sheep, goats, camels, and donkeys. Wipe it all out. Destroy it completely. The next day when Samuel catches up to Saul and questions him, he immediately said that he had done what the Lord had commanded. Saul actually kept some of the animals. He took the plunder and brought back King Agag head of the Amalekite nation. He would not acknowledge this, his wrongdoing, until Samuel exposed him. Until Samuel told him that God saw everything that he did. Until he, Samuel, told him that because of your disobedience, God has rejected you as king. Then Saul wanted to uh, 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 apologize. Uh, uh, He wanted to uh, 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 say, uh, I I didn't mean to. I, I, I took all that stuff in order to be able to put a, a, a sacrifice unto the Lord. You know when you took that stuff, Saul, that you, your God was the furthest thing from your mind. This is when God tells us obedience is better than sacrifice. Uh, Saul tried to justify his actions and tried to make it look as though he was sacrificing to the Lord rather than him increasing himself and those who were with him. He lied to God's messenger. In the same manner, Ananias and Sapphira lied to God's prophets. But how many know that when we do that, we're actually lying to God? Proverbs 19 and 9 says, A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who pours out lies will perish. Luke 13 and 3 says, but unless you repent, unless you repent, you too will all perish. Mm -hmm. Why was it that David, even with all of his mess, was considered a man after God's own heart? Because he had a repentant spirit. Ah. God is forewarning that things will be exposed in this season. They each had an opportunity to tell the truth and repent, but chose to lie. So note to us, own our stuff and do it quickly. Have a repentant heart. Purge and cleanse ourselves through fasting and prayer confession, and 
repentance. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Obedience unto God is much better than a tainted sacrifice. Yeah. That's the word. Be prepared to exit a season. Own your stuff. And lastly, operate in spiritual maturity. Learn how to deal with one another in this season that's coming. If God shows you something, pray and ask God if you are to act upon it. If he tells you to say something or do something, ask God to give you the words to say. Don't just go in your flesh and in your feelings. Not in this season. There is a way to correct others, especially leaders, especially believers in the household of faith. Look at Nathan and David. Nathan humbly went to David and spoke truth to power without offense. Can we speak truth to power? without offense, hmm. we have to watch how we handle things in this season. Gossiping about people has never helped to resolve any situation. Let's do less gossiping and more reconciling and restoring. Nathan didn't go to David with the wrong attitude. He didn't go with the wrong motive. He didn't go to him with an I told you so attitude. He didn't go pointing a judgmental finger. He didn't go in arrogance or to degrade him, demean him, or to beat him down. We must be mindful how we handle other believers in this season. Several scriptures come to mind here. Ha. The ones that dropped into my spirit were Psalm 105 and 15. Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Yes, David did what he did. But David is also what? A child of the king. Nathan had to watch how he approached David. How many know that that could have went another way? Yeah. Yeah, 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 but Nathan went in humbly because Nathan went in with the intent to give an opportunity for repentance, an opportunity to be forgiven, an opportunity to be restored. (sighs) Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, You who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any sin, you who are spiritual, that is, you who are responsive to the guidance of the Spirit, are to restore such a person in a spirit of gentleness. Hmm. Not with a sense of superiority or Mm self-righteousness. Keeping a watchful eye on yourself Uh so that you are not tempted as well. That's Galatians 6 and 1. And I have to give you one last one, and that is Galatians 6.10. So then, While we as individual believers have the opportunity, let us do good to all people. Not only being helpful, but also doing that which promotes spiritual well-being. And especially be a blessing to those of the household of faith, the born-again believers. Nathan went offering David an opportunity to see himself. Acknowledge his sin and repent before Almighty God in order to be forgiven and be restored. As a result, David owned his stuff. We cannot operate in our feelings in this season. 
brothers and sisters, we have to ask God to open our spiritual eyes and ears so that we may see and hear what thus saith the Lord, clearly. God is not playing, and we should not be playing with him in this season. Listen, it's a warning for the upcoming season. How Christ-like are we operating if we do not give others an opportunity to repent or to be forgiven? Do we make Christ's death on the cross of none effect when we act as if there is no opportunity for repentance or forgiveness? When we can't get past our last mistake, no, scratch that, when we can't get past our first mistake, Mm. Is your season about to change? Because you have come to true repentance? Or is there really no hope? Why does it seem that God is forgiving and using people that we had written off and thought that there was no hope for? And how will we treat them in this season? Are we like Jonah, angry with God because God has forgiven them? What right do you have to be angry is what God asked Jonah. I am forgiving people to save a nation. And you are angry. Mm. How will we respond in this season? You know what? Because of Jesus Christ, the one who gave his life, the one who came to take away the sins of the world, God demonstrates his love to us in that while we were yet sinners, not not after we got cleaned up, but while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. We need to take a note of this. And because of Christ shedding his blood on Calvary, we still have hope, brothers and sisters. We still have an opportunity for repentance. We still have an opportunity for redemption. We still have an opportunity to be forgiven of our sins and cleansed from all unrighteousness. But God says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Ah, I thank God. I thank God. I thank God that Christ willingly shed his blood and died to take away our sins. That was a gift from God. Have we received that gift? Have we received Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God, as our Savior, as our Lord? We have a choice. We have a choice. God gave us free will. And so we have to make a decision. Thanks be unto God that the songwriter (laughs) said, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. We dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock we stand. All other ground is sinking sand. In this season of miracles, in this season of believing, in this season that we are in, thanks be unto God that he is still in the forgiving business.
thanks be unto God that he is still hearing us. Are we hearing him or are we hard of listening? No, I did not misquote that. I did not mean to say hard of hearing because that might imply a medical impairment. I said hard of listening because that's what we do sometimes when we don't want to do what God is telling us to do. Will we just continue to do what we want or will we do what God says which results in the saving of many lives? Joseph being obedient unto God was credited with saving so many lives in Egypt and beyond. Huh. He could have turned away from God yeah. when he was lied on, when he was thrown into prison, when he was in a season of bondage. We can't turn away from God when we're in a bad season because God is still in control and we're going to come out of that season. God is going to forewarn us when our seasons are going to change, but we need to listen. We need to listen. We need to listen, brothers and sisters. We need to listen. What will you do in your season? Listen and follow God's instruction. I dare you to trust him. I double dog dare you to trust him in this season you will be amazed at what God will do. God bless you. Stand to your feet. We pray that you've been blessed by today's message. Please join us again next week for another powerful word from God. For prayer requests or to order a copy of today's program, write to us at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, 2516 Squirrel Hill Road in Herndon, Virginia, 20171. That's Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, 2516 Squirrel Hill Road in Herndon, Virginia, 20171. You can also visit us on the web at www.mountpleasantbaptist.org. When ordering, please be sure to include the message number. Until we meet again, remember, God's Word, our mission field.